Owned by Dr. Coppinger. You should probably say what you said this morning first. You should probably repeat what you said about consciousness because it's a great start to a conversation. Right. Um, I, I, I use that quite often said, to say the dog's unconscious because it wakes up the audience and, uh, and, they, and they sit there and they fight me on it. But actually, it does come down to the fact that, it's that you have these, these motor patterns which are taxonomic characters of, of, the, um, of the animal, of the species, if you will. And um, it's inherited, and if, if I wanted a border collie, if I wanted a herd sheep, I'd get myself a border collie. And the reason being is that they have those innate motor patterns, and uh, you can't teach a dog to do that. Um, you put them in the right environment, and then they go into this eye stock behavior. Um, it's everybody who's ever worked with border collies knows that it's genetic. And uh, so if it is genetic, what makes you think the dog even knows what he's doing? All right. In other words, I, I breathe here and uh, in and out, in and out, and uh, all day long, and I never think about it. I, I don't know that I'm doing it. I'm not conscious that I'm doing it. And I thought my little story about driving to work and not knowing what um, what route I took is, you know, a kind of unconsciousness. Uh, uh, so that's what I was getting at because uh, when, when Patricia was talking and she was showing the pictures of those really, really nice border collies and they're doing their uh, little thing and, and you say, well, it's an it's a aggression on the part of the sheep and the dog knows and backs off. No, it's, uh, I wouldn't say that. I would say that what happens is that the dog's in an environment and that environment changes and so it withdraws. Uh, at that time, it withdraws the motor pattern, and I just didn't think they were necessarily conscious of what that she was threatening them or anything. So, anyway, it, I, it threw down the gauntlet. Yeah, he does that. And there was someone who suggested we scrap the panel and just put you two in a cage and you fight it out. <laughs> but, um, we're all grown up, so Trisha. Well, and there are a lot of other, there are some great minds on this panel who I'm sure also have some other things to say about it. But just um, just, just to start, first of all, it is, Ray is absolutely right that, that a tremendous amount of behavior could be done um, without consciousness. Um, people who have sleep disorders actually have, uh, there's a famous case in which someone actually murdered his in-laws um, in a sleep disorder, and he was sound asleep. He was literally sleepwalking, but in this case he was sleep murdering. Um, but one of the things we know about, about sleep is that your brain is still very, very busy, but um, while you're normally asleep, if you're a normal person, then your body is actually paralyzed. So you can't actually act out these things. And he, so this person was charged with murder and then, and then judged innocent because of, the neurologist convinced the jury and the judge that he had literally no consciousness of what he was doing. So it's absolutely true that a tremendous amount of behavior can occur without consciousness. But, but, he's wrong. And, and bless him. Although, I don't know that either. You know, we're all just making this up. I don't know that dogs are conscious. Here's what I do know. One of the leading researchers on consciousness is um, Tononi. He's a brilliant neurophysiologist who works at my university, University of Wisconsin-Madison. And he's been studying consciousness for decades. And what he's done is, first of all, to try and figure out what it is in people. I mean, how do you know that I'm conscious? Right? How do you know that anybody on this, how do we know that anybody is conscious? How do you prove that? So what he's done is he's done decades of really good neurobiology, looking at people in different states of what we would call consciousness, so people who are awake, people who are in vegetative brain states, people who've been anesthetized for surgery. And here's, here's the, probably the key to what he's found. What he's found is that, is that we know that when you're asleep, all of the areas of your brain are still active. Your brain does not go to sleep. All of the areas of your brain are still active. I'm speaking somewhat simplistically, but needless to say, all your brain is busy. What's different about being asleep 
is that the different areas of your brain do not connect. There are there is no discussion, no interaction, um, very little communication.